there today. Uh, as all y'all know, my name is William Richard Bunning Jr. And uh, I just got into some trouble in West Virginia and I was charged with uh, obstruction of a police officer uh, for not resisting arrest. I was, um, I was charged with public intoxication, even though I wasn't arrested on public land, I was arrested on private land. And because the altercation happened on public land, that's, that's a big point. And, um, and, I'm, and I'm charged with property damage that, that I had a, I had a fella in town that told me that the truck wasn't even up there. So uh, a lot of y'all know the incident. I'm not gonna do the incident. What I want you to do is Larry Rodriguez himself, the man in the altercation. Oh, and by the way, before I get started, I'm doing this, uh, I mean, everybody's uh, using Facebook against all these crazy people when something happens. Uh, so I guess it's supposed to count. And the only reason I'm saying anything out here right now, this is my personal business, but I believe in we the people and I believe in everybody knowing the true story, even if it's your own personal business, when you're being lied on really bad, bad enough to where a newspaper, the Ritchie County Gazette, uh, wrote up an article on me when they had their own people doing felonies and I just got three little old misdemeanors and I'm from out of town, but I get a, almost the whole page in their rag. And the Ritchie County prosecutor, I don't even assistant prosecutor that Boyden in this radio show and Larry Rodriguez are gonna use this radio show against me. They're proud of what they said. And I want, uh, I want the Ritchie County prosecutor and the Ritchie County Gazette to listen to these two men promote violence against me, say I'm a rapist, a murderer that I rape page four. I mean, I want you to listen to these two men and what they say about me and none of, and, and saying I got all these felonies and that I've assaulted police officers and I wish death on police officers. There ain't nowhere out there I've ever done that. A matter of fact, I got live videos with millions and millions of views with me telling the cops to stop shooting us in the street, that we needed peace. I've always been about that. So Ritchie County prosecutor and the judge and the magistrate court of Ritchie County, I hope that you're listening to this because I'm going to be there November 8th to plead not guilty. And this is why, but I'm not going to get a chance to say it in your court because I don't think that court, I'm just going to be honest with you. I might be paranoid. Uh, I might have schizoaffective disorder and I don't believe in the system. That's why they say I'm crazy, but I'll be crazy like that. But I'll tell you since that's documented, uh, I don't think that your court system is going to be fair to me. I am an outsider. I did cuss that sheriff and that deputy really bad, and I'm sorry about that. But because of this radio show where these men, Larry Rodriguez, the victim in all of this, is going to tell you that he knocked me out. I don't even remember hardly talking to your cop. I barely remember being on Facebook Live. Uh, there's a Facebook Live video, and if he'll be honest, he's mad, and he even says it in his police report that I called him a Yankee and a traitor. That's what he's mad about. And I said some things to them in the truck going to jail. I mean, I was mad. I don't remember none of it, though, because I was knocked out. I got And, then they, and they do take x-rays, uh, Larry Rodriguez, in this radio show, Larry Rodriguez, in his own words, sits there and says um, that uh, they don't take – he thinks I'm lying. I'm a liar because I said I got an x-ray of my jaw at the, um, at the, the, the North West Virginia holding facility jail. They got regional jails. Well, they do, Larry Rodriguez, and it's on record there, so big deal. Uh, go ask your nurse friend, and she'll tell you. And also, they took a picture from under my jaw and from my right side of my jaw, not my left where I, where I got cracked. And But they don't, they're not allowed to talk to the prisoners, but that's fine. The whole thing is this radio show has all the, has the half-truth, and, and he had his say. This is almost like a say in court. He said it out loud. He said it on a WordPress radio blog with Richard Boyden, a wannabe journalist, a guy that hates me, a guy that accuses me of everything in the world from raping my wife to raping page four to holding people hostage to having homicidal tendencies that, it, that I probably done murdered people uh, and killed them that I'm a, and all the other good things like I'm a sodomite and uh, and I'm a, uh, I'm a member of the SPLC. No, but my family is. My family's a member of the SPLC. I don't trust them because they're a government organization, but they do put up the hate list and I do use their statistics, but I'm not a member of the SPLC. He can't, if you what, if you matter of fact, if you go a little further and you want to, you'll see the most psychotic obsessed man you've ever met in the history of mankind. Hundreds of blogs on, on my Karen Sue and me, and they're all derogatory, wishing babies death, saying babies died. I mean, these are real violent men. And you'll hear Larry Rodriguez. He'll even, he admits in this radio show that after he knocked me out, that he uh, was, would, if it would have been a year ago when he was all well and big and strong, I guess, and Republican, he would have beat the shit out of me. He would have kicked my face in and kicked my ribs in right here on the radio blog out of his mouth. 
him running his mouth to Boyden. And here's the thing, Rodriguez. What you don't understand is Boyden is, is mentally ill. He's on mental disability. He is not a he is not a Vietnam combat vet. He's never been to Nam. This guy is just obsessed with me and my wife. He follows my Facebook life around. And when I put my personal life out here, like I do to be cool and try to learn my own life and walk my own life and, and teach my kids and grandkids, I don't get to see because they're down south. Whatever I do it for. I'm sitting out here trying to make a lesson. So he gets bits and pieces and he calls people like page four. He told page four, if he was going to give her $300 uh, to cover her bail money. And then he got it in her mind. Like I'm going to take the Bonnie Lee uh, account. Not even I had access to their bank accounts and blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> wow. Well, I was only, I was Bonnie Lee farm and the only money that came in there came from donations from people that, that came from, um, Basically, because of the parties that I had and all that kind of stuff. So whatever on that, either way, they got you. This guy's gotten in bed with Larry as well and played on his hate. You played on his hate and fear, didn't you, Boyden? But here's one time, Boyden, you and Larry Rodriguez wanted to be tough guys and you ran your fucking mouth. And I'll say that in front of the magistrate judge. And I'll say that in front of the Ritchie County prosecutor that I hope listen to this and read this radio blog. And by the way, everybody that that's even slightly interested. Uh, or maybe this might be big news later on because I think this is more of a big oil ploy and this is a big oil bought out county. And that's why I was trying to tell the magistrate or I'll tell the prosecutor, I don't trust your court because I don't know who owns you. I don't know if Ritchie County people put you in there or Ritchie County oil and coal and, and fracking uh, corporations put you in there. Are you just trying to shut me down because I showed the gas cloud coming over you? I had a live video of a gas cloud coming over your town that comes over every night. Matter of fact, I had three or four videos. So whatever, I'm just trying to say these men are admitting in this radio blog almost the whole story. But I want to get a few, I want to get a few things straight. Uh, so I did make some notes before I got on here because, uh, like I said, if this wants to be used in court against me, then fine. Because I don't think you're going to let me say this in court. So at least I got my say. So you're holding my say. This is my say right here. This is William Richard Bunning Jr.'s say right here on two men attacking me on a public radio show that anybody – and. Many people did listen to it. Many, many people did listen to it. But anyway, these ain't my glasses, so bear with me. Um, all right, the one thing, his first claim was that I was some bum that came up, that I'm uh, somehow associated with hip camp, or I go around and find hip camp landowners. No uh, prosecutor or magistrate and, and anybody that cares. Uh, I was a year and a half at Bonnie Lee Farm, and everybody will tell you it was great until me and Paige had one incident because she's a left-wing Trump extremist. And then I get, I go, I go on a homeless project. I was doing things with my life. I was doing things with the fucking people, and and this these people messed it up. But I got myself involved, so I'm not, I'm not blaming responsibility. I ain't a blamer. I'm a truth teller. And here's the truth. So a uh, guy picks me up, takes me down there, tells me this guy's associated with hemp camp, Larry Rodriguez, which he said he was, and he admits in the radio blog. And uh, but he was trying to charge 150 a person a night. That's like he was trying to. He thought it was like uh, people just wanting to go around and give land. They're both these landowners wanting to make money, but they're both political extremists. And I'm in the middle, and I got I got five, six hundred videos that tell you I'm not political. That I just don't like the lie of politics and people getting stuck up in them. So I'm supposed to be this guy following hip camp landowners. No, Larry, I had a home. My my rent was paid for the next two years. You say I didn't have a job. You know what my job is? My job is helping my brother and being a steward to my planet. And it actually pays pretty good. It, it pays real good in karma coin. It pays excellent in health. And uh, the other thing it pays in is that people came and healed themselves at Bonnie Lee Farm. Page four will tell you that. Steve Hoyito that lives there will tell you that. Ravonna Bolden will tell you that. And Karen Sue Anders that lived there will tell you that. It was really 99% of the time it was cool. And 9% of the time out of that, uh, if there was any fuss, it was always over politics or gun control because Paige was starting shit with everybody because she's neoliberal and this guy's fucking neo-Nazi and he's supposed to be a Mexican. So there's where the trouble stays that I couldn't keep my mouth shut so long. Trouble does build up. People do build up pressure when they when you tell them they're wrong, no matter what they are, left wing or right wing extremists. There's also me having a video documented saying that as well. All right. So there you go on what happened. I was doing a homeless project because all of a sudden I was homeless. So I was going to make some lemonade out of some lemon. And for the magistrate and the Ritchie County prosecutor uh, down south, that means I take trouble and I try to get something good out of it. So what I found was the, the, just a, the whole point with Larry 
was to was to help him out, not me out. He did. He admits in the radio show he just did have a surgery, but and he he asked me for help, and I never asked him for a penny. In total, Michael gave me forty dollars one time, and Larry gave me twenty one uh, twenty dollars one time through them. That was over a month and a half. Because the first two weeks I was supposed to live there, Larry Rodriguez, that you said it was a week, you said two weeks if I'd put the insulation up. And I did. And you didn't feed me twice a day because you wound the first, after the first three days I met you, you had, you were in your house laid up with this big staph infection on your gut, man, or whatever it was. It looked like a staph infection, but his guts were fucked up, y'all. But he was nowhere near feeble. And Larry, how about this? Would you tell the, um, the magistrate and, 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 and the prosecutor here if they're listening? Um, uh, that when I when I told you that all, all of us had limitations, you said I had no limitations. You wanted to push it. That's why your gut was popping back open because you pushed yourself. And that's on you, but that's fine. I'm just trying to say because that makes a point. Because he says I'm this hip camp leech, no working leech that picked up the trash off your trail, Larry. All the trash piles that that all the trash scared on your trail. You wasn't picking up you and you and anybody there that was associated with the North Bend Rail Trail. You want to talk about work, but that's fine. Uh, that, that's that's karma coin right there. That's that's stewardship to a planet. That's me being a man of my word. So I'm wanting y'all to hear my side of this story. And he sits there and says I'm a leech, and and um, but that he's you know not limited. Now we got into it. He brought me down to. He asked me to come down to his house one day if I was interested in some more work. We had already been leaning towards it. We were filling each other out. It took about three weeks to get to this point, and he asked me to come down there, and we sat on his back porch. And I rolled the joint. We sat there and smoked the joint. And we shook hands and said that I was going to work for him maybe through the summer, but we were going to take it at a day at a time. He wanted to do all this, not me, by the way. And he did have some acreage, and he can't take care of it. And and we were all cooled in, Larry. That was all cooled in. That's why I called you a week later after this. But from that morning and us shaking hands, I went straight to work on a, on an old uh, cabin he's got. And it's in, it's in decent shape, but it has some old rotten pallets around it that just needed to get – I, I spent half the day busting that out. He said I could be stay in the cabin. This is right by their house, and blah blah blah. We had made a deal, and that's between us. But I want the Richie County prosecutor and the magistrate to know that that was the deal, and we were fine in. It wasn't until that night that he invited me to a non-existent meteor shower. This was um, oh man, what was it? Right, it was right before October, September 28th, 29th, whenever whenever this altercation happened. Uh, but there was no there was no meteor shower uh, that night that I went down there to talk to him at the tent. And I thought that he was just, I, I had a feeling I was being going to be felt out a little bit deeper, but I could feel him out a little bit deeper. And I was going to see where our conversations could go because that's how I live. Man, we got down there and talked about the best things in the world. He had set him up a little tent. He was laying down because, like he said, his guts was messed up. I ain't denying that he was he was invalid and all or whatever. And um, and his old lady was back and forth and everything was cool. And then when it was just me and him sitting out there, no, I had never brought up politics. And he sat there and said something about, well, Trump made ten, made four, four million jobs, and then it went to 10 million jobs. Ain't that right, Larry? And I smirked, and you said, what are you smirking about? And I said, well, man, the president don't make no jobs, and uh, which is true. The president's position does not create jobs. He's a fucking employee. He don't create jobs, but he can, he can influence jobs and stuff like that, but whatever. The president don't make jobs. And that was my only point. And he said something about, I don't like Trump. He asked me. Ask me if I don't like Trump. No, I don't like the misogynistic thinking his daughter's cute. All that weird shit. He's a weird old billionaire, and he's a puppet for the new world order federal government. And if I'm crazy, then I'll say that. But that's why I don't trust this court, and that's why I'm saying this to you, we the people. Uh, but but no, nah, man, that's where the altercation. But it was a week later. Uh, he went in the hospital the next day. Matter of fact, that's why he was wanting to watch the stars that night. He was wanting to sit out and watch the stars because he had to go to the hospital the next morning, and he thought he'd probably be laid up for a while. So he was enjoying one last night out, and I thought that was cool. But it turned out that way, and he even admits on the radio show that I walked away, that I just walked away. Um, so he does actually have to lay out for a while, and he was flat on his back. And Michael told me, the guy between us, since we ain't talking no more, he told me, he said, hey, you got about a week to get your stuff out, so don't worry about it. So about a week later was that Saturday that happened on a Friday or Saturday. And a week later, uh, it was October 7th, I believe. Um, I did. I went down. I've been at a place. Uh, I didn't. Now I didn't know what was going to go. Oh, and by the way, not having a job, I was waiting on a cart to drag my crippled dog across America to do the MAGA walk. And it wasn't the MAGA make America great again. It was the MAGA meet and greet again. 
And I was just waiting on that. And he knew that. And he had, even during this time period where, where, we, where we weren't talking about the Trump thing before the altercation that I got charges on, um, even even before that, he was telling Michael things. And Michael was saying, hey, Larry said that you could do this kind of thing with wheels. Maybe we can build one. And I'm like, oh, it's on the way. The cart's on the way. Nobody believes me that shit comes in the mail until it gets there. So anyway, uh, but the cart got held up and and uh, they were out of stock and they took about a week, uh, a week too long to tell me I was still going to do the MAGA walk. That Saturday when I found out that I wasn't going to get the cart, I was kind of I was kind of down and out. So I did go to the bar. Florida was paying LSU. Uh, the bartender lady in there can tell you how many beers I drank. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I even took a couple shots of shine because I was getting along with everybody. Here's the other thing. Nobody else in the whole city of Pennsburg, West Virginia, tell them I wasn't anything but kind to them, that I paid my way everywhere. I even to sit at the convenience store and charge up on their, their thing. I would sit there and buy drinks and a piece of pizza. If it was at Subway, I, I ate at Subway sometimes two, two times a day. How was you feeding me two times a day, Larry, that you say in the radio show? And you would give me $20 a day. This man said he gave me $20 a day. Cause he felt sorry for me. Who do you feel that sorry for? And you're broke. <laughs> so whatever. Um, all right. Now here's the whole thing about the legal part of this. He's, he's charging me with damage to property. And I got a guy that's saying the thing down there, but I don't know. Cause I went down there. I was pretty mad. He, I, I, he admits that I called him. This is the important part for the judge. He admits that I called him. And I guess I did call him. Cause I looked at my phone log and the phone log, uh, you know, tell you everything. And uh, I called him and he admits I right hear on the radio show in his own mouth that I called and, and said, hey, Larry, I ain't mad with you, man. He knew what I was doing. I, and then I, it didn't just he didn't just stop. It wasn't just that much. It wasn't why well, I'm mad at you. Click. That ain't that. Hit, that ain't the whole story. The story is I told him I wasn't mad at him and that I loved him, man. And the whole thing was just, you know, was all over Trump. And why do we have to argue about Trump? And then he, he just kept on with that shit because he is a diehard trumpet. Just listen to him. He is one of them right wing extremists. You can't even even apologize and say what what the what the problem was about. Nah, here here he goes. You know he's going off again. But he did hang up the phone on me, and that's where I got mad, and that's where I made my mistake, and that's where I'll admit to the public intoxication because I got back on the trail and I was drinking. So I got on the public trail, the North Bend Rail Trail, and I walked down it. But I never went his yard. And he came out because he came out for one thing. He parks his truck. If it was there, I mean, it parks his truck right there at his gate. And uh, and to be honest, all he had to do was just not even come out of his house because his house is like uh, shit, 60, 80 yards off the off the trail right there. But he says that he hobbled. He grabbed his cane and his nine millimeters because he's all fucked up. And he hobbles out to the trail. And but then he's trying to say, I came in the yard. We can't, you can't get in the yard like that. And plus he walked up, he was already waiting on me before I even got to his gate. That's why I don't remember the truck or nothing. Before I got to his gate, he popped off two rounds and then one more round right there. And he didn't pop them off in the wood pile. He even says I shot at Bunning. And then he goes, oh, well, I mean, I shot over in the wood pile right here on the radio show. Listen at him when he's talking about the shooting. All right, no matter where you are, what state you're in, and I looked it up in uh, West Virginia for the prosecutor in case he missed this one, or the judge in case maybe she wants to take this in consideration of my frame and state of my state of mind at the time. Uh, it's a it's it's fucking aggravated assault felony if you shoot a gun at somebody, or even and like unless you're shooting up and and then if you pointed at him and he did, he pointed at me again, and I and I told him that part's right. I said, go on, kill me. Not I wasn't on my knees in. Now this ain't the exaggerated part he put out there. Now, this is at the beginning. I said, fucking shoot me. I get tired of that gun shit. You're going to kill somebody, kill them. That's a quick way to go. So whatever. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, whatever. It wasn't cool to do it, but so that wasn't working. And he admits it, that he, that he took his cane and he knocked me out. He says it out of his mouth. Now, here's the thing. He hit me with a cane and he got me right there on the, on the nerve of the jaw. And I went, he said, I went down like a sack of potatoes or something. He describes it like that. He just went down like a brick or whatever. And uh, right there in the radio show. And uh, so I'm not out. And then he's saying, I get back up on my knees uh, and start telling him to kill me, kill me, kill me. And that's when I was acting really crazy, right? All right. You ever seen boxers when they get knocked out and they just, oh, they freeze up. They look like one of them fainting goats, right? I mean, it's, or they shake or they, they, they're not themselves. I don't remember hardly a damn thing after that. I barely remember the Facebook Live. And, and I'll say that. And there's it. Tons of physical evidence that being knocked out 
can put you in a delusional state of mind. So everything on there, that's on Larry Rodriguez for knocking me out. And that's as far, you can call it justice if you want, or self-justice, or seeing it my way, or all that. But I went down there and started trouble, I got knocked out. But that trouble beget trouble, and his trouble beget more trouble. So there you go. I was knocked out. I didn't know. He admits I was knocked out, and that's when I was acting crazy. Then he says I did all these things to his truck, but all that damage that he shows these pictures of and they talk about on the radio show are from the back of the truck, which is at the trail. So that's what I'm wanting to tell you. From what I can understand, it happened because it was pitch black dark that night, by the way, and I walked down that trail with nothing but my bad attitude, bad attitude and drunken breath. That's how I came down that trail. I couldn't see shit. That's why I remember the gun flashes. And, uh, and, the other, and the other people down at the store said there were three shots as well, two shots and then a single shot. So whatever on a one shot bullshit. Uh, and, and being in the yard. Now, even on the radio show, he admits to walking back to his house. So if I was in your yard, then I'd been in, you, could, you wouldn't have had to walk, that he just left me there on my knees, and then that's apparently when all this fucking damage. All right, then the other thing is, he says I took a stick in the broken window, I guess, and uh, jammed out his radio. All right, well, I'm drunk and knocked out. I'm on my knees. I can't hardly move. He's telling me that that's when he would have kicked me in the face a year ago, but I was so fucked up that he just walked away and said, fuck it. I mean, it just makes it all nonchalant. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm covered down. I'm just going to go back to the house with old lady. Fuck me. We'll call the police. and come shovel him out of my fucking yard. All right? I'm on a goddamn trail uh, knocked out, by the way. Larry, when the first time I got in your truck that we went over to uh, – Oh, take your old lady some lunch, and we went by the Halliburton trailers, and then, and that girl and her boyfriend that worked for you. Remember that day? Your your fucking radio wasn't working in, so how'd I bust out a radio? You didn't even have one in there. I was talking about helping you put one in. See, this is it, y'all, and this is it for the judge and the prosecutor. This is this is the thing I'm not going to get to tell you uh, in your courtroom. There really are men like me that go around and help people, and if page fours wasn't so full of ha uh, hate, but Steve Hoggito or uh, – Many people, how about this? Anybody that's ever come out there and even seen the way I was interacting with them, anybody that's ever seen me and Karen Sue together, anybody, anybody, prosecutor and judge, but you're not going to go that far because all you're going to see is some drunk red, some drunk swamp rat redneck, not your normal hillbilly that's going to comply to big oil and, and just every gun thrown in his face uh, is, is going to make him fucking run and, and duck for cover. You know, I, I'm going to be looked at like you see me and, and you got a right to do that. You got a right to do that because I did show my ass. But I, I got drunk in your town because I was homesick. I got drunk in your town. I wasn't drunk, by the way, either. It wasn't until after I got knocked out. I had a damn good buzz, but I wasn't, like, falling down drunk, y'all. And even in the Facebook Live, you can tell that my, my, my speech wasn't slurred so much as it was. I was hardly able to move my jaw. Every time I screamed, y'all, it was like a lightning bolt hit me in the face. But I've got that on Facebook Live, and I tell him the same story that I'm telling now. So they tried to twist that. I never told said, told the man I was going to kill him. I never said I was going to burn him down in his house. But here's the thing. And the same guy that, that, uh, that told me about the truck not being there, because I don't, I, like I said, he came at me on the trail. I didn't even make it to his house. Um, uh, he also said that you, Larry Rodriguez, put a beat down hit on me, $100 or something to beat me down. And you told three guys down there, and two of them told me, and one of them's on tape. So – now, he's only said that, matter of fact, he said he would talk to the um, the prosecutor uh, on, uh, maybe in person because of the fact. But I'll give him their name, and he can you know, maybe he won't say nothing because he's got to live there. Maybe you'll put a beat down hit on him. You act like something like you're uh, – and this guy, by the way, uh, Your Honor, uh, or Your Honor, you know, the, the judge, the magistrate judge, and, uh, and, uh, and the prosecutor out there, I just want you to take in the correct that he – he admits violence. He admits that a year ago he would have done all these vicious things to me. He, this guy revels in the fact, look at his tattoos, his ink, that he's uh, Al Capone. He thinks everything in his life tough. Al Capone dated his uh, niece or something. He'll tell you that story and, uh, and how he's in with the tough guys up there in the north and then how he went down to Florida and rode with the outlaws, the worst outlaw gang ever in Florida. I mean, them guys was their own community, and they did their own thing, but it was the wrong thing. They were killer and murderers, and anybody that hung with them liked that lifestyle. I don't do none of that. I walk the Appalachian Trail. I've been to, I've been to Australia to just love people. Uh, I, I, I am trouble when I, when I drink, and I've even admitted that, but it's only when trouble comes to me. I didn't back down to a lesser man 
that had promised me a job one day and turned around in a bipolar method and the very night turned around and, and fired me because of Trump. Took my livelihood. The two projects that I started ended in your, in your county because of the way Pennsburg and West Virginia is and the way these people are and the promises that they made to me. I only planned on being in your town for two days and you can ask a lady out here named Erin. She was supposed to pick me up in two days and we were gonna get, we were doing a homeless documentary backed by the People's Tribune newspaper and some other private people in Chicago. So there you go on who I am. I'm not some vagabond that was fucking running around trying to find some landowner to mooch off of. I do really help people. I've helped many people. It's not just Paige, but you know what? Life happens. This was just one of them things. With Paige, she had been off her meds uh, PTSD meds, she'll admit this. She had been taking all kind of other kind of stuff, trying to wean off and do this, but it didn't work. And when, when things got back, I mean, an argument happened and it turned to her using her fist on me. Well, I, I, whether I could have stayed there or not, I didn't want to stay there no more. And my only alternative was, and again, and this guy, Michael, he'll ask you, and it's probably the reason why he put up the bond, because he knows the truth. And the truth is, man, it was just one thing after another that happened. And it shouldn't have went this way. But Larry Rodriguez, and, and Richard Boyden, I want you to pay attention to this because Richard Boyden said that he was going to send you all this information about me to uh, the Ritchie, Ritchie County Pro Prosecutor's Office. We'll really look at it. He only referenced himself. He, he sits there and has hundreds, and, hundreds of slanderous remarks against me that I should even take to court, but I, whatever, it's internet bullshit. But it's documented, as he says. He's trying to put me on a map. Well, put me on a map. Go back and look at him. He, he, he just got off a um, uh, no contact warrant, a five year no contact warrant for stalking Karen Sue Anders with a gun. Just look it up in Ohio. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I got to come to court and you're going to use him for information against me, this guy is a convicted fucking felon from a uh, gun stalking and uh, malicious, malicious attempt. So he was stalking her with a gun that he bought on the way. Nobody knows what he's going to do because it didn't happen. Because luckily, and he said she wasn't in the house. She was in the house. She was right in the house. And he came up and he waited for everybody else to leave but her. And he went up there and started knocking on the door. And a neighbor next door called the police. So that's what saved my wife from Richard Boyden. Now, Larry Rodriguez, I don't know if you're a Mexican. Uh, uh, actually, your food was, was what I ate down there at the restaurant was pretty good. I'm not going to say you got bad food, and he does keep a clean place. And he actually did uh, show me something new, which was Mexican Coca Cola, and it's just got cane sugar, but I never seen it before. Uh, it tasted like a Coke. Other than that, I tried to help you. I found a bike flint arrowhead, like one I found here on this property, by the way. Uh, this one was broken. Yours was solid. And that must have, I'm, I should have looked at that and seen that, that it was like war was coming. But I gave it to you, didn't I? I found it right there on your restaurant. Everything that happened happened around all the all the packages, all the good times. You can't take that away, Larry. It all went sour in one night after you had hired me that morning, and that's the fucking truth. And your vengeance for losing out and pissing me off, or not being able to be in a, the little man you claim me to be, and always running your mouth. Look at the people of Pennsboro. If the prosecutor and the magistrate judge want to take their time and go ask the people of Pennsboro what they think about Larry Rodriguez, that he's highly over opinionated, that he starts these kind of uh, arguments with people and they're always political. It's always what he thinks, but he ain't never served. He ain't done nothing but had an excavation business uh, in Florida and whatever, ate, that dated Al Capone's niece. That's all he's done. It ain't rode with outlaws, but he wants to. He has that mentality prosecutor he has that mentality judge and these two men proved their fucking mentality on this radio thing with the out of their own mouths trying to intimidate me to get me to say something back and look at my comments in the back i actually made facebook comments back to him because he put it on facebook it got out he put it out to the public so i'm putting it out to the public you take this into consideration because i'm not going to be able to say this in your courtroom i'm gonna come in here and tell you that i'm not guilty and the only thing that i feel like i done was uh, I took some bait. I took some bait, and then I found information later on after I looked into it because I was worried about me getting beat up or me or me getting jumped on by some of your citizens and them getting in trouble. Think about this, prosecutor. You would have been prosecuting another man for beating me up because Larry Rodriguez paid him to beat me up. And whether that's an aspersion or not, I got a man that said that's what he was going to do. So here's a, here's a man that's just trying to cause trouble in your town, trying to, trying to have laws broken in your town. So whatever, y'all got a hard enough time dealing with that fracking, and I hope that fracking don't own your court, and I hope that the Ritchie County Gazette 
prints this. Why don't you put this in your paper, Richie County Gazette? You put up the police office. And listen, that's us, something too. Uh, I tried to get in touch with that deputy on uh, link, LinkedIn or whatever that thing is. But I don't use social media. But I, I'm going to tell you something, deputy, and I want to say something to the sheriff of Richie County. I, I have been drinking. I had a few beers in your town, and if you go back and ask them people, I was getting along with everybody, and there wasn't no trouble. I'd been there in your town over a month with no trouble. I had supported your community, both your dollar store and family dollar, and I'm very memorable. I look like this, and I was always buying batteries from family dollar and having to change them in because it's a Chinese Atlas store and nothing worked. And the other dollar store I bought my food at and, and uh, my dog food for my dog. You can ask the girls at the subway. I ate there two times a day most of the time. You can ask the lady at the counter, any of the ladies at the counter. I called them Miss Lady. I treated them with respect. Um, I, I would buy a lottery ticket so I could sit outside. I would ask to sit outside or I would let them know that I was going to be sitting outside. I was never bothered them when they was in a rush. I never acted like I was a customer. I just acted like I was in that little small strip of your of your town pensboro being a brother and just and just supporting the community and not want people to look at me like a scrub because see here's the one thing prosecutor and judge i did choose to live a certain way and this is what i was saying and i do go around and hemp land, landowners for no money i'm just trying to do my own thing and live my own life that's all i'm trying to do have altercation with this man and now it's blown out of proportion and if you listen to this and you even take any time to look into my case and the justice in this You'll see that there would have been no altercation with the, with the officer if I hadn't have been knocked out. The man admitted to two aggravated assault felonies. He admitted to knocking me out with a cane and he admitted to shooting at me with a gun. The only time he said he needed to defend his life when he hobbled out, but he walked on back home quick, didn't he? So there you go. He admitted that he's a violent man. And he and in that town, he, he, is, he is known for being uh, overly opinionated and, and politically motivated almost everything he says. That's his problem. And if he'll tell the truth or, or Michael or, or even say anything, uh, anybody associated with that rail trail, all the people in town I talked to about the rail trail, I was going to do a documentary from uh, Charleston or whatever it, whatever, whatever it is to Parkersburg. And I was going to try to get amateur par paranormal investigators to come to those train tunnels and get all these little towns a little attention instead of fracking. Maybe the people can make some real money off some tourism or some real money off something maybe getting to one of these ghost hunter shows or something. But no, man, I had plans. I had work and I had people all around that approve prove everybody. Well, not prove it. Just say that we were all in on this. I do things in groups. I do things as a tribe, what we call our tribe. I, I People are around me and we have projects going. Nobody's sitting around. Nobody's all getting drunk every day and getting paid $20 a day by your, your citizen of Pennsburg, your citizen of your county. So, no, I'm sorry, uh, Deputy, and I'm sorry, Sheriff, that I was unreal. Uh, the real crime in that town, I feel, is not nobody having drinking water and nobody's getting arrested for that. Or maybe that that gas cloud that comes over every night, maybe y'all can go arrest whoever's doing that. But, no, you did your job, and, and, and you should have put me down because I was drunk. And I think any police officer, I'll say this right now, if you're drunk, but all I was doing, y'all, was holding my phone. And until he had me, I was on the ground when he threw it out of my hand. I never I never told that officer. The only thing in his report I see is being false. Because I did call him a Yankee and I did call him a traitor. If I'd have known that he served 12 years in the Army medics, uh, I would have – I probably would have still cussed him, but I would have been calling him a brother. So whatever. Um, the thing is, I was rough on him, but I did not obstruct him from doing his job. I told him that my passport ID was in my left rear pocket, and then he started asking me questions, and I said, I ain't got nothing else to say. I, he told me I was detained and under arrest. I didn't have nothing else to say. That's my right. But I did tell him where my ID was, Your Honor, or your Judge, and I did tell him, Prosecutor, that my that it was in my left hand. If they don't want to say something. Now, I don't remember. Uh, I'm just going by what his police report said. I'm going to be honest about this. It was so in and out from the time I got knocked out, um, whether it was alcohol attributed or just a good blow. It was a good, solid blow. I mean, he got you couldn't have got nobody better on the cheek, right on the corner of the jaw where it meets, where it meets the skull. And uh, it probably wasn't even until I got into jail. I was hearing things. My ears were ringing when I was in the back of that truck. I mean, I, I, I swear to God, I thought them damn cops were talking to me. Whatever. There's some, there's some things that are going to stay private. But um, – um, yeah, I was cussing and fussing. I just been knocked out by a man that called me down to his house and, uh, and I called him up to make peace. And that's the whole thing. I'm a man of peace. And I called him and I didn't say I was coming down there to, to beat his ass or to kill him. 
Uh, I told him, I was, well, yeah, because you ought to heard what he's calling me. He's calling me an end lover and a tree hugger and a liberal when I'm none of that. I'm just a man. I'm just a man stuck in the middle of y'all's political world, but the Richie County Gazette, they want to write it up like it was a political argument and all this kind of stuff and put some flair and flash on it because they don't they don't write articles about their poor water. They don't write articles about uh, Richie County Gazette. Don't write articles about gas clouds going over their town. Well, I got big video documentaries of it right there about a funeral home that has more funerals than it should be having for an area that size. So maybe maybe y'all got some real crimes and some real things to write about down there in Richie County. But I'll come up and show up for court and do what I'm supposed to do. Uh, and tell you that I'm not guilty, and this is why. But I'm not going to get – see, the only reason I'm doing it out here, and I'm going to say it for the last time, I know I ain't going to get no say in court. We don't get no say in court no more. If we're poor or we got a certain appearance or we live a certain way, we don't get a, we don't get a say in court. That's their best way of making me comply, probably make me get a haircut, send me to prison, shave my head, shave my beard over some bullshit misdemeanors in a bullshit fight that should have been taken care of without police. But it also should have been taken care of without hatred for uh, political matters, for people. Because um, he even admits this is the one thing. This is what Larry, and this is what he's really mad about. I did tell him I'd help him make his dream come true. I, then I turned around and called my Karen Sue, and I said, wow, baby, I think I got us a place. Because I've been away from my wife while all this has been going on. And uh, I really thought, I really believed the guy. I busted my ass that day to get, the, get all that rotten wood up and uh, so I could get uh, Urban down there to that cabin and get him settled. So whatever, man. You know that you got mad because you blew your dream, Larry. You blew your land getting taken care of for free. You didn't even and, – and who provided who with what, Larry? Who provided who with what? I just want you to remember that part. You get that part straight. All right. All right, y'all. This was, this, was, this was me. I'm sorry I took your time, and I don't know. I've been on here a long time, 36 minutes. That's 36 minutes of time that I took to try to save my life or at least save me a year's – uh, prison time that I keep hearing from people I know down there in Ritchie County telling me that that's what they're going to do. That they're just going to give me a year no matter what I do or whatever happens. But I also think that this goes deeper, and I'm going to say this uh, from the crazy side of me, but but still the defensive side of me, the side that wants to defend myself. I, th I think that that whole county is bought out by frackers. I don't think that anybody even in that region or even the state of West Virginia or even getting along the whole Marcellus shell is not bought out or sold out some kind of way. Big oil man, frackers and all these people come in and they did and they did take your people's jobs. They didn't give y'all the jobs. They all got the service jobs and I watched them every day for a month and a half. And this is why I think I'm being uh, ramrodded. This is why I think all these charges, we should have just been drunk and disorderly. It, that's all it should have been. Drunk and disorderly uh, on some crazy guy and say, hey man, it's about time to get out of town, ain't it? I was already going down the trail. I already had plans. I want some vagabond leeching off landowners like these two cocksuckers say. And if the Richie County Prosecutor's Office does not listen to this radio blog of the man admitting to two aggravated assaults and uh, admitting to the whole thing and then my rebuttal right here, that's on y'all. And you can do what you want to me because I freed my mind a long time ago. This body don't mean shit. Think about that. All right, y'all. That's me defending myself. Now, I hope some of y'all listen to carry through and listen in. It was a good story anyway, wasn't it? It's <laughs> better than soap opera. But that's what it was, y'all. Just some soap opera bullshit gone bad. Nothing bad really happened. Nothing that couldn't be took care of. But no, nah, man, we're going to make something big out of it because it's a dying town, and I think it's bought out. So we'll see. I love y'all. Peace, and don't live in fear. And Richard County Prosecutor, I hope you do watch this. I'm not being disrespectful to you. I'm just upset that I know I would have not got 38 minutes in your courtroom, and nobody does anymore. Nobody gets 38 minutes in the courtroom, and that's a shame. Peace.